What's up everybody, I'm Guy. This is the Just Blue Fish Watch Reviews channel and today we are talking about seven mistakes that new, and yes, sometimes even experienced watch collectors make. But first, I want you to let me know what's the number one mistake that you've made in your watch collecting journey. Leave me a comment down below sharing your experiences and hopefully it'll help me avoid some of those things that I haven't even thought of yet. Now, let's roll the intro and start the list. The number one mistake I think we probably have all made is not doing enough research before we buy a new watch. And look, I get it, I've done it myself. We see something, we've gotta have it, and we pull the trigger, only to find out that maybe it wasn't the best decision. Look, there's a ton of reasons why a watch might not be what we were hoping for. Maybe the size isn't quite right. Maybe the quality isn't really what we were expecting. The dial color might look different in person than it did in pictures. There's any number of other things that can pop up that frankly we just weren't expecting. But right now there's so much information out there on the internet and of course right here on YouTube that there's almost no excuse for being surprised unless maybe it's a really new or a rare watch that people haven't covered yet. And in that case, I'd like to add that being an early adopter of a new product often isn't the best idea. So yeah, do more research before you buy, and hopefully I'll take my own advice before my next purchase. The second mistake that I see people making is spending too much money. Buying a new watch that you really can't afford is almost certainly going to ruin the experience for you. Watches are meant to be worn, they're meant to be enjoyed, and if you spend all of your time worrying about the value of the watch that's on your wrist, it's gonna be really hard to enjoy it. Also, going into debt to buy a watch that you can't really afford is never a good idea. But let me be clear, I'm not one of these guys that says never finance a watch. I don't have a problem with putting a watch on a credit card, for example. There's plenty of good reasons to go that route. But only do that if you know you can really afford it. Because building a mountain of debt that you're going to struggle to pay back on a depreciating asset probably isn't a good plan. The third mistake is sort of the flip side of the last one, and that's not spending enough money on a watch. So here's the thing. We get the itch to buy a new watch, and the one that we want might take a few extra months of putting money aside before we can afford it. So instead of being patient, we buy something more affordable right now to scratch that itch. This is almost always a mistake. Nine times out of 10, you're still gonna want the other watch, and now you've just set yourself back even longer on saving up to get it. Yeah, you can always sell the cheaper watch when you're ready to buy that one you really wanted. And if you bought it right, you might not lose money. But that can be tricky, and you might also end up losing 50% of what you spent on that cheaper watch. So I say save up and buy the one that you really wanted. As the old saying goes, buy once, cry once. Or is it buy nice or buy twice? Either way, it still makes sense. Now, number four in the list of mistakes that new and even experienced watch collectors make is not getting insurance, especially on your expensive watches. So I got an email from a viewer a while back. It's kind of a story that I want to share with you guys. I did a video on it, but if you missed that, I want to repeat it here. He just bought a new Rolex Sea Dweller. And he had an accident and the watch got banged up pretty badly. Not just a few days after he bought it. And... It wasn't insured and ended up costing him over a thousand dollars to have it repaired if memory serves. If you're spending thousands of dollars on a watch, just get it insured. I think I pay around 125 bucks a year to insure my Submariner. I pay even less to insure my Speedmaster. And I don't have to worry about them when I'm wearing them. Get insurance. Preferably, at least in my opinion, through a private insurer so it's not tacked onto your homeowner's policy. That way it won't affect those premiums in the event that you ever have to make a claim. So number five, and the easiest mistake to avoid that I see people make, and yeah, I have done it myself too, is not getting the best price when buying a new watch. Buying a new watch from a retailer at full list price is usually a mistake. 
Unless, of course, we're talking about limited or rare or hard to get models. But on everything else, negotiating or haggling a discount is all but expected. And yeah, I know haggling is something that some people aren't super comfortable doing, and I get that. But just keep in mind that the list price is almost never the real price. Now this reminded me about someone that commented to me once that a certain website listed all of their watches at full retail and they would never buy from that dealer. Here's what you gotta understand about that, is that oftentimes a manufacturer won't allow a dealer to advertise prices below the suggested retail price. So if you're gonna go to a dealer website and they list a price on a watch that seems too high, pick up the phone and call them and ask them what they can do, ask them what their best price is. Better yet, do your own research and know what the going price is and offer them that price. But don't try to negotiate price with the dealer and then when they accept your terms, say something like, okay, let me think about it and I'll call you back because that's kind of disrespectful. Number six is simple, but it's often overlooked. Every watch will at some point require service and it can be expensive relative to the price of the watch. So don't forget about future service costs. It's more of an issue with affordable watches than it is with expensive watches. So before you build a collection that consists of dozens of 200 to $500 watches, make sure that you understand that you will eventually need to service all of those watches. And it will often cost nearly as much as the watch did when you bought it new. On an expensive watch, the cost of service relative to the price of the watch will matter probably a lot less, but it will still be pretty expensive. So yeah, be aware of what it will cost to service your watches when that time comes. And also, know how long it will take, because it's usually not a super fast turnaround time either. The number seven and final mistake that new and probably especially experienced watch collectors make is getting too deep into this hobby. Watches are fun and I love them as much as the next guy, but there's more to life than watches. And if you're spending all of your time obsessing over them and all of your extra money buying them, the odds are that you're probably neglecting other aspects of your life. I came to that conclusion myself last year and I decided that I needed to spend some of my time on other interests outside of this hobby. So I got back into playing guitar and I'm really happy that I did. I also took some time and more interest into the production side of my videos. And I spent a lot of time learning about lighting and videography, and I got really deep into it. A hobby doesn't need to be all or nothing. And at least for me, I think that splitting attention between more than one thing, it was a good idea. So yeah, try new things or fall back on old interests so you don't wrap yourself up completely in watches. I think that having diverse interests helps make us all a little bit more well-rounded individuals. And a change of pace from time to time is probably a good thing for the mind and the soul. All right, guys, that was my list of seven mistakes that I see new and sometimes even experienced watch collectors make. Please don't forget, I wanna hear from you, so leave me a comment down below sharing some of the mistakes that you've made along your watch collecting journey. And hopefully I can avoid the ones that I haven't even thought of yet. Now, before you go, check the description of this video. There's a list of ways that you can help me out and I could really use the support. First, there's a link to my Patreon account, and if you can, please join up there and give a small donation. I would greatly appreciate it. The amount of time and the cost to make these videos has gone up like a balloon after all of the money that I've spent on new cameras and new lighting and new software. And being as this is kind of my full-time gig, I could really use the support. And of course, thanks to all the guys that are already over there on Patreon supporting the channel. I really appreciate it. Now, if you don't wanna do that, please consider using my Amazon affiliate link if you wanna buy something that I've reviewed or anything else for that matter. I do get a small commission with each transaction after you click that link. Those do add up and they help out a lot. And again, thanks to all the guys that use that link. Now, with that said, I guess it's time to wrap this one up, sign off and say bye now.